Warning, the following Otaku Generation podcast has content of an adult and mature nature and is not necessarily safe for work or appropriate for children under the age of 18. If you are easily offended by content of this type, please stop this recording. Parental discretion is advised. The opinions and viewpoints expressed on Otaku Generation are those of the cast and crew and the individuals that express them and are not necessarily associated with the sponsors or guests of the show. Otaku Generation is a Red Apple production which is solely responsible for its content. All impressions are poorly impersonated. And please, for the love of God, don't try this at home. Domo arigato. This here's Wichita Roboto. <laughs> I'm just kidding. This here's Wichita Rutherford from over at 5 Minutes with Wichita.com. And these boys over here at Otaku Generation, oh, they's a really kick it in the hiney. And you know why? Because it's a good show. You know why? Because they try hard. You know why? I don't think they know why. They just do it because they love it. That's why. Oh, you boys just are doing so well. <laughs> and you're precious. Well, welcome to Otaku Generation. generation. Next generation radio for Otaku. <laughs> Our podcast brings all the otaku to the yard. If anyone tells you we're cold-hearted snakes, just look into their eyes and say, oh, oh, to see if they've been telling lies. We're still podcasting from OGNetworks.tv in a basement where, if you got that reference, we're not sorry. Show number 752, November 6th, 2019, with this week's topic, Black Fox. And now, podcast shows we might make in 2020. Number one, the Cursing and Violence Children's Hour. Number two, Podcast Parakeet, Psychology. Number three, Fire Hydrants, Threat or Menace. Number four, Bad Accents to Offend People of All Creeds and Nations. And number five, the 20 Minute Apathy Hour. And now, someone who couldn't eat all the leftover Halloween candy because someone stole it, Alan Chase. Hey, Matt. How's it going? Pretty good. Got through Halloween with not a single trick-or-treater. Oh, really? Yep. And you've been, uh, you moved, uh, what, a couple years ago, right? Yeah, I've been there like, you know, three or four years. So has that been um, a thing for you? I guess so. I mean, maybe people are just like too frady cat to just like walk up to a house and demand trick-or-treats yeah i i um i got the sense that this was a thing that kids are starting to do earlier but maybe Mm. it's just not a thing anymore i don't know i'm Uh, not a parent so i don't really have any sense of it um yeah if they're always doing it on like a thursday before sundown you know people are at work you know yeah anyhow hi hello everyone i am alan i am matt bryce and paul we got a paul on skype we got a, it's just like half of us are here and half of us are on Skype. <laughs> it seems like the, the new, the new paradigm. What's Freesh? What's Bank? What's Squeak with the OG crew? Indeed. There is uh, some stuff I got to fix and tweak and I, I don't, I don't know. Some, some gear is starting to fall apart on this and uh, I was going to make an upgrade and then I paused on some upgrading some gear and now it's screaming at me, upgrade me, upgrade me. So, uh, yeah, now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the pains of it now. Um, so, yeah. Hi, hello, everyone. Um, okay, so what did I do uh, this week? Um, I was working on some film stuff. Um, I watched through quite a bit of, like, Netflix and Amazon Prime stuff. Uh, the Jack Ryan series got released from Amazon Prime. Um, so I basically watched through all of it in the weekend. And then uh, there's another TV show that's pretty good called Atypical that's on Netflix. Uh, And I am all but like two episodes left on it. It's a really good series. Um, I definitely recommend it. Um, And that is primarily all the stuff that it's kind of worth talking about. I didn't really do anything major. Uh, It was mostly just sort of uh, work on the the film project and... Mm. Uh, I did a bunch of Minecrafting. <laughs> There's that. I, I snuck that in there the the weekend, even though I said I wasn't going to. But uh, it was one of those things where uh, 
you know, allergies were kicking my butt throughout the week. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I just felt like I needed some rest. And before I forget, New Conlu came out. Um, And then uh, also last week, I think it was last week, before last show last week, Uh uh, the new, you know, the ATS came out as well for October. That was in Mm -hmm. October, no less. Um, So that's it. So those are all the the things for me. Matt, what about you? uh, What's been going on? Uh, well, it's been kind of a quiet week. I've been uh, rereading uh, a Neil Stevenson uh, book called Fall or Dodge in Hell, which is about a guy who um, dies unexpectedly, and then he was one of these people who wanted to be frozen so that he could be revived at some point in the future when, you know, People oh, had cryogenic, out what was, cryogenics or whatever. Yeah. Whatever it was going to um, be. Except that the twist on it is that in this one, he's not medically revived. They determined that that's impossible. So what they do is they scan his brain and run a computer simulation of it um, on a massive supercomputer. So basically, he's he just sort of like wakes up as a disembodied presence in an empty universe and then what happens from there um, as he sort of like goes around creating a new universe to inhabit out of chaos hmm. okay so it's in some ways it's kind of a uh, a retelling of of you know the fall of satan from heaven um except that he's both god and satan oh okay <laughs> <laughs> We're we're kind of like loose with with the analogies here, but it's it's a very interesting book, and uh, it it gives a, a nice idea of you know what the future might be like, um, because it, it takes place over the course of like a hundred years. Okay, and uh, I suppose the interesting thing to me about this was that there's a lot of um, sort of hooks to other Neil Stevenson um, books like Cryptonomicon, and um, the the Baroque cycle, um, you you see a lot of names like Waterhouse, Shafto, um, show up in this. Um, Enoch Root wanders through at one point, so it's got you know interesting little hooks to to like tie all of these things in with each other. Okay. So um, that's about it. Um, only other thing I've been doing lately is I went to a Halloween party with some friends. Mm. Um, Played uh, some terraforming Mars, got totally skunked, but it was okay because I was playing with friends. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Bryce, what about you? What's been going on? Uh, not a lot since last week. Um, start, uh, one game I did start, though, is called Luca, L-U-C-A-H, Born in a Dream, which mm-hmm. is a um, indie game I found. Originally, I played a demo for it on itch.io, um, but it came out on Steam a while ago, so I picked it up then. I finally started to start playing it. That's cool. It's a it got a really cool look to it. It's almost like this. Um, how about describe it honestly? It looks like almost like chalk on like a on an asphalt look to it a little <laughs> bit, but with different colors. And it's sort of a two D action game. It, people compare it to something like Bayonetta, but it's not quite that um, complicated. But it's very um, you know action character action game. You know dodge at the right time, just slow down time, and then counter attack stuff like that. Uh, but it's cool. Uh, it has a, this is a cool thing where I guess every fighting style you, you get like different like this is the long range but weak fighting style this is the short range but strong fighting style that's more risky you can sort of like alter each um, style by sort of like equipping a different style onto it so you have like a strong attack that's slow and heavy and damaging but you have a very weak attack that is good at uh, long range and much more safer to use so it, it occurs a lot of like uh, mixing and matching which I appreciate mm-hmm. uh, in styles uh, very the story's a very um it's very uh like they're going with like a less is more uh <laughs> uh technique with the storytelling like it's a little it's not quite saying what's really happened it seems like some it seems like it gets in some pretty dark places uh but i think it's cool uh it's it's fun um i wouldn't necessarily run out of buy right now but i'm glad i'm playing it uh i will say at the very end well there's this thing going on the whole game where this is meter a uh, percentage meter is sort of filling up 
slowly and if you die it kind of fills up a little more like a couple extra percent and i'm not really sure what happens when it gets to 100 percent. and i guess we'll see when that happens. <laughs> um it, i don't know if it's gonna, it, it's gonna go all mob psycho and then like just yeah. start blow up the world or <laughs> if it's like that's the end you'll get maybe it's the bad end needs if you fill it up all the way so i'm like in the 60 percent, but i looked it up on the last chapter so i'm hoping that maybe i'll be okay <laughs> um so i guess we'll see um but it's fun, uh, and you know it's not an easy game, but it's not like pu- super punishing. Uh, for instance, if you die, you keep all your experience you earn and go to the last, uh, you know, checkpoint, and you can spend your experience for like upgrades on health and strength and stuff like that. So you can sort of brute force it, and I guess the that's the trade off. Like if you brute force it too much, you're gonna end up, you know, getting 100% in the meter, I guess, whatever that happens. Uh, but yeah. I mean, it's one of those where, like, I think if you play it enough, you will get, you will be able to finish it. I know there's a new game plus mode, so I'm not sure what that all works into it. Um, uh, but yeah, it's fun. I'm like a, it's like a, I'm like five hours in. I guess it's like almost to the end, so it's not a huge commitment. But check it out. It's on, it's on Steam. I think it's on Switch as well, um, and definitely on HIO. And yeah, that's kind of like all I really this week. I mean, it's been other stuff that I've sort of been working on, like manga I've been reading, like Promise Everland and. Uh, my hero, which I caught up on finally. Uh, my Hero Academia. I guess that's about it for me, Paul. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. So the only anime I watched this last week was the latest episode of um, of the Bookworm Show, mm-hmm. uh, which I have to say, as an isekai, I do appreciate because the protagonist is not actually overpowered. Uh, she's actually just a five-year-old girl who knows too much, <laughs> uh, which is, you know, at least different than some of the other ones we've been seeing. So uh, it kind of makes up for the fact that the characters are utterly vapid and empty. I mean, there's there's no depth to them at all. They're just here to go through the motions of, you know, this plot. And in fact, it's fine to watch. Um, I'm probably going to be continuing with it for the moment, unless it takes a real turn for the salt word. Uh, Let's see, what else? Um, Oh, I guess this past week I noticed that uh, a new season of Disenchantment had dropped on Netflix. Oh, Oh, that's the... the Futurama, uh, The Simpsons and the Futurama. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah, it's it's, uh, Matt Groening character designs. He's listed as creator. I don't know what that actually means because I don't think he has writer credits on it. Uh, But, you know, it's got a lot of characters with tragic overbites, um, as it's growing (laughs) style. Uh, But uh, the second season sort of picks up where the first left off. I think I'm like five episodes out of ten through it. And they're definitely going a bit heavier for plot this season. Uh, They are going for a sort of a situation comedy a bit more, sort of an episodic thing. And while they still have, you know, sort of a theme of each episode, uh, it's definitely sort of (laughs) building on... Uh, uh, building up its uh, its mythos with each episode. Uh, I'm enjoying it. Um, I'll probably be wrapping that up this week. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Anything else? Um, on the gaming front, I got sucked back into a really dumb game, which is Mad Max on mm. Steam. Yeah. <laughs> and, I mean, it's just... I mean, the thing about Mad Max, I, I think I've like 100% of this game twice previously, so it's incredibly dumb that I'm playing it, and it's an incredibly <laughs> dumb game to 100%. Uh, but there, there's something about this game. So it was released uh, right around the time that uh, that Mad Max Fury Road came out, and it has nothing at all to do with the movie. <laughs> it's just mm-hmm. Matt running around... Or, excuse me, Max running around this wasteland, and this wasteland is just brilliantly drawn. I mean, you know, driving your car through this wasteland, you know, crashing it into various uh, hoodlums and, you know, not quite mutants, but, you know, (laughs) post-apocalyptic warriors is just, you know, stupidly satisfying. Uh, It's got all these little biomes of, you know, desert uh, post-apocalyptic wasteland, and they all have their own feels. You know, you're driving through the sulfur lakes, you're driving through the... You know, that, that, that old highway through the Australian uh, wasteland. You've got the, the burned out um, gas stations. You know, you're driving through the mountains. Uh, and there's a, you know, just a very simple combat system where you're punching dudes in the face. And every so often, you uh, berserk out. 
and then you know you punch him in the face really really hard <laughs> Fury attack you've got. I have to say I really appreciate because instead of like throwing them against the wall, like you come at them when they're down and you just you know pick them up and crack their neck. So it's, wow. it's like a kind of a this non-dramatic finish. Um, and again, as I say, this is not a good game. I mean, this is like a solid like eighty out of a hundred game. Yeah. <laughs> a uh, beat your game, maybe. It's, it's, it's almost more of an activity than a game. Just spending time in this place, you know, just driving around. Upgrading your car, you know, hitting a few of the, uh, you know, the various collectibles where you go into, you know, some abandoned building or some underground bunker or some, you know, burned out ship because all the water is gone. So you're just on the ocean floor outside this harbor. Uh, nothing but sand. So. Do you listen yeah. to, I tend to like when I, with games like that, I do tend to listen to like podcasts and stuff while I play it to sort of as like something to, you know, to do while I listen. Do you ever do that or is it more... Oh, yeah, yeah, I have totally been doing that with this one. Okay. And I actually yeah. found a new podcast to listen to while I have been watching it. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, Sanctum Secorum. So it's a uh, an RPG podcast uh, with a literary bent. Uh, so the angle it takes is uh, if you're an old school Dungeons and Dragons player, you know about Appendix N from the original uh, Dungeon Master's Guide. Mm -hmm. uh, so this was the list where uh, Gary, Gary Gygax, or Gygax, stuck in sort of his list of, of books that inspired Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, you know, from Jack Vance, uh, you know, the Ob and, uh, and uh, My Michael Moorcock to more obscure ones you might not know about, like John Belair's, um, and, and so on. So this particular podcast takes uh, is, is sort of working its way through appendix n but also tying it into a rather a newer game in the old school renaissance rpg tradition which is dungeon crawl classics mm -hmm. um uh, so which sort of bills itself as, as an appendix in tabletop role-playing game uh so it's rather than just sort of the specific angle that uh, that Dungeons and Dragons took uh, Dungeon Crawl Classics tries to sort of enable all the different types of games that the other books in Appendix N might suggest. Uh, so the, the the people in who put on this podcast are you know doing a really nice job of just kind of diving into the books, figuring out you know hey this is some really cool weird stuff that'd be great to work into a game. That's so. cool. Yeah. yeah, but but yeah. So I mean, a games like this where you know it's sort of you know null from a you know a, a brain engagement perspective, it's perfect for that. Just sort of uh, you know getting through some other sort of um, you know audio media that's linear that you're never going to actually just sit down and listen to. Yeah, I find that when I play um, like competitive online games, like Call of Duty or something, if I get into that game that year, I tend to listen to like a ton of podcasts while I play because it's like the perfect thing to do because there's no story, there's no like, you know, you know, it's not really much of a um, invo uh, what's the word I'm thinking for, like a tone or an or like a mood to be set. So, <laughs> right, right, right. So, yeah, I I do that quite a bit when I'm Minecrafting. That's yeah, how exactly. I get through Minecraft a lot of podcasts. Yeah. yeah, unless I need my focus and I my attention. Though, however, I will find myself pausing things because of the fact that um, sometimes I'm hearing, you know, it's interesting that I, I become extra sensitive to noises when I'm playing Minecraft um, because it's just little subtle things. That's when you hear something is like coming at you or, or whatever it is. And so I notice that if I'm like half watching, a you know, something like a TV show or Netflix while I'm Minecrafting, I'm a little extra sensitive when it comes to audio. I hear sounds that I normally wouldn't be paying, you know, my brain just normally tunes out. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of how I also, when I'm gaming to the, you know, sense of that, do the same thing. Alrighty, so I guess that's probably about it for me this week. Uh, other than that, it was mostly work, which we don't want to talk about here, so we will just uh, sort of sidle to the side and move along. Yeah, no one wants to hear about our work. Yeah. It's boring. I play too much Magic Arena. That's the reason why I don't yeah. do new things, yeah. honestly. <laughs> Every week. Yeah, I hear you. Yeah, it's the same thing with me and Minecraft. Um, okay, um, so we don't really have anything else to do, uh, so we must go right into the topic. The topic! Yep, which is... 
Black Fox. All one word. No spaces here, kids. That's right. We're so cool. We don't need spaces. And depending on where you look up the links, uh, might be uppercase or not. Um, okay, so what do we need to know? Where shall we start? Uh, no drama ever proceeds when you have a stable parental <laughs> environment. Oh, okay. So okay, we're done. That's Black <laughs> Fox, everybody. See you next week. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, basically, this is, um, it starts out with a little girl who's like six years old um, being stalked by a hideous masked killer. And it turns out that it's her grandfather who is training her to become a ninja because she is the heir apparent to the Black Fox ninja family. And, you know, when she's 16 years old, she's going to take over the family and become a ninja or, and do whatever ninjas do in the modern world. Yeah. Um, she has the grandfather. She has her father. I don't know where the mother is. I guess she's dead or something like that. Never address it. <laughs> the whole thing, actually. Nope. Yeah. yeah. That's no, true. Not at all. Um, the father, however, is not a ninja. He broke away from the ninja tradition and he builds robots. So he's got a robot dog and a robot eagle and a robot flying squirrel that that become the girls um, like assistants and bacon haulers out of the fire. Um, and life seems pretty good until, of course, mysterious evil people kill the grandfather and the father which I guess means the robots were not all that great and he wasn't much of a ninja to begin with. Naturally, bereft of her stable family upbringing, the girl vows dark revenge on um, whoever it was that committed this terrible deed and she goes out to get revenge on them. Yeah, and from that sort of generic and promising start, the series kind of just wobbles around in the space it's set up and never really hits any heights. Nope. Uh, it's all about, you know, this girl, and she's got a counterpart because there's another father who's had another girl, and he was the enemy of this girl's father, and there's no mother on that side of the family either. So clearly there's uh, there's something going on here with the, with the writers. So I want to take one one pause for a second and and go back to a fundamental thing that irritates me about all these um, everything that now involves ninjas going forward <laughs> in anime. When did ninjas all of a sudden? You know, I know the answer to this. This is Naruto's fault, but. Why is it all of a sudden all ninjas are not just, you know, warriors for hire that are stealthy, but now all of a sudden they're supernatural and they can do all kinds of super powery things, right? And so now yeah. every single ninja anything has to have super power. With... This is the irritating thing about this. Mm. Anime? Yeah, that's just that's just anime, though. I mean, everybody's right. got to be over overpowered, right. and like this series from a, from a sort of a powers design perspective is super dumb because every fight everybody's pulling out something new. Yeah, uh, and you know when we get into one of these later fights, and like the enemy scientist is suddenly levitating gigantic rocks with his mind and throwing them, it's like where did this come from? Why did we not have this earlier in this movie? Right. Yeah, and. They they just wind up with, they're not ninjas. They're they're like Esper super powered people. Um, you should just call them Espers with you know like a minor in ninjology or something. Uh, you know, so if we were going back to like Anime Club, the things that were easy to sell is you put some kind of stupid, useless mascot in the middle of the show, and that mm -hmm. was what was a high vote. And so what you have is you have two of them. You have a talking dog and a flying squirrel, and they don't have any value that they're adding to this show. Yeah, but you forgot, you, come on, come on, Alan. You forgot the eagle. Oh, I mean, God. <laughs> no, I did, I did not so not forget the eagle. They couldn't even spend enough time to, to give them full exposition to get them into your minds. No, it's just the, the, this whole thing is problematic from its <laughs> basis. And um, 
And then, you know, sort of the Naruto ninja aspect of everything is mm. irritates the hell out of me additionally. Um, I felt very unengaged with this whole show. Uh, whatever plot that's in here, whatever you read on Wiki or ANN or whatever, it kind of doesn't really matter. It's just there for um, a, a format for them to play around with their, you know, hey, look, I can animate people being overpowered. And the, the, the other thing is the, the plotting here is really driven by idiocy. Uh, because, it, you know, there's so many points where, you know, if you just put a bullet between somebody's eyes, you know, you would not have to have the next scene. And after like the fourth time, the evil bad scientist does his, ha ha, I'm a psychopath thing. I made you trust me for a moment. Uh, it's like, you know, it's re that that angle has really worn out its welcome. So I made a comment to Matt while mm. we were watching this that I thought, well, OK, so the 2D, 3D, you know, whole planing there it isn't tremendously bad and it's not that badly animated and then he reminded me yeah but there's no coloring there's no shading and everything um, is very flat yeah every time we we see our protagonist girl it's like she has no shadows on her face which i mean i i once i noticed this i started watching other characters and other parts of the of the show and they had shadows on them um, but it just seems like she never did. So she was just curiously um, flat in the foreground. Um, so I don't know. She's a ninja. She lives in the shadows. She yeah. don't need shadows on her face. Think about it. <laughs> so, so when we were chatting before the show, you mentioned that you were digging around and it looked like this had originally been intended as a a regular TV anime that was turned into a feature length film. Um, yeah, I, I think I was, I saw it on ANN, uh, somewhere and looking at it, it's, it's sort of like, oh, well that kind of makes sense because it, it sort of feels like it just skips from, from like one episodic setup to the next, just blink, blink, blink. And, uh, you look at it and you go, oh, well, if you took a, a TV series and you sort of like cut out the opening and the closings and then about like you know half the episode to uh to save on runtime that's that's about what you would get i feel um it it just seems kind of disjointed um admittedly i was not watching with like a hundred percent attention at all times um because it it just was just sort of aggressively there well, th this this show was simultaneously uh, rushed and empty. Mm. I mean, because they had so many sort of plot type things that they wanted to sort of touch along the way, and they're just touching along because our our main character is like a six year old fighting her grandpa, and then you know her her dad's being murdered, and then she's a detective living with some other girl, and <laughs> and so on, and there's no it doesn't let you sort of establish uh, any sort of rapport with the characters at any point along. It's just uh, sort of a flitting from action scene to action scene, but the flitting is very slow paced in a way mm. that's not interesting to sort of watch. Yeah. It uh, like, it, it doesn't feel like each, each ideally for, for a plot to progress, you feel like each new scene should grow out of the seeds of the previous scene. And that's sort of the opposite of what happens here. It's like, okay, this happens, and then something different happens. And it's it doesn't, like, grow out of anything that was foreshadowed or developed or, or established in the tone of the previous bits. It's just, okay, well, at this point, this happens now. And, uh, okay, now we're fighting that. And, oh, this guy's evil. And here he's being more evil, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It really washed over me. I gotta, I gotta <laughs> say, well, like, never before have I shrugged so loudly in a yeah. to a movie. Because <laughs> I, I know before I was just like, "This is awful. I can't watch this. It's a waste of my time." The whole time, it's like, eh. it was like my, you know, reaction to the whole damn thing. Yeah, um, I mean, it's not a series you really actively hate. 
I mean, yeah. it's not you know terrible as it passes by. The character designs are fine. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, the animation when it's happening is fine. Uh, but then you know you're looking at the fight, and you're like, this is a really dumb fight. Yeah. I, guess I thought like aggressively generic is what we kind of like <laughs> describe the story and like, um, everything about the whole. Yeah. And, and getting down to it, sort of the the fundamental sort of um, conflict at the heart of this is that you know young Rika, you know, is heir to this ninja, um, this ninja heric, this ninja clan, uh, but you know she can't kill anybody. And like this bit where she can't kill anybody is just what makes this whole thing so incredibly dumb because she's going up against this group of paramilitary, um, you know, mercenaries no who are with the, uh, you know, the uh, cyberpunk corporation that's controlling the city and slaughtered her family. But no, she can't kill them. And, and the yeah, and the grandfather killed like I presumably he killed a few people in the beginning when they finally did the attack on, you know their yeah. household so i don't <laughs> yeah that's exactly it. it felt like it got off i mean so like that the, the opening sequence where she is running through the halls of this you know yeah. traditional japanese mansion mm -hmm. being stalked by this figure in a black fox mask you know is set up almost as a horror thing yeah that's what i thought i was like this like is this like corpse party again or something? <laughs> but then like it, the, then when she starts to fight back, it's like okay, no, this is very different. And then mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah, find it's like, out it's all a big training session. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know, Grandpa's a big doofus, and you know she's uh, you know she's got him under her thumb, and you know and then she's doing the high tech thing with Daddy and his magic uh, his magic uh, dog robot, <laughs> and then you've got this really heavy thing where both of them are just like slaughtered in front of her, gunned down. You know, die in her arms, blood everywhere. Yeah. And then from, and, and so, I mean, that was a, actually a reasonably promising start, I thought. It wasn't that set up for a great series, but at least, um, you know, stuff was happening. It was, if a bit, little bit disconnected. But after that, it just kind of, you know, turned the, the temperature down and sat in <laughs> tepid mediocrity <laughs> for the rest of the show. Yeah. She's a real mediocre ninja at first, I thought. Like, she was getting caught on camera constantly. Like, yeah. <laughs> the cat scratched off her camouflage like it's yeah. kind of killed was kind of a doofus for someone yeah. who's supposed to be well, like, as, ready to as, take revenge on her family as previously mentioned the grandfather was not the best ninja honestly yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> nothing about this was the best anything <laughs> honestly um, but not the worst that's the thing yeah <laughs> and it, off. it this just sort of like went through the through the whole movie and at the end the the like chief villain is cackling maniacally and trying to make some sort of thesis about why evil is good and then just like telekinetically throwing rocks at people and I'm like we, we came an awful long way from you know like paramilitary troops and like robot dogs here um, it's, it's just a full blown esper combat with mind control and um at at one point, the guy is like using his own daughter as a as a telekinetic weapon against our ninja girl protagonist, and it's just like, oh dear. Yeah, it's just so damn heavy handed, yeah. and you know, her the daughter's reaction is just you know mush brained simple mindedness in response <laughs> to this. And as the series, or as the series, the show wraps up, we get a cliffhanger ending where, you know, bad cyber president, uh, cyberpunk company president Brad, uh, <laughs> having taken over Brad City, says, oh, yeah, everything's cool. Uh, you know, we're going to pay for all the damages and all the journalists smile. And with half his face, he smiles, the, you know, the halfway up his chin slit <laughs> grin of the, the villain we saw at mm. the at, while her parents were being murdered. Uh -huh. And it's just like, eh, thank goodness this is just a feature-length movie and I don't have to watch yeah. anymore. And I can start discussing its its mediocrity now. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't, you don't have to go too deep into plot specifics, but there was a point where the daughter trusted her father again, the, the Esper daughter. <laughs> yeah. To the point where I was just like, what are you doing? Like, don't, like, <laughs> he's like, tell me where you are, I'll come to you. It's like, no, don't do that. <laughs> Go to him. You're going to give away where everybody is and ruin everything. And, and that's golly, what that's what happens. <laughs> and lo and behold, the father actually is still crazy. 
<laughs> ended up using yeah. her again. Uh, yeah. yeah. It's it's kind of like the Simpsons um, Halloween special where Marge bops Homer on the head in the Shining ripoff and, like, tosses him in the food locker and says, you can stay in there until you're not crazy anymore. Yeah. I don't know. I think I would enjoy watching a Simpsons Halloween special, which oh, I've not course. seen yeah, in that, decades, that way saying. more than this 90 <laughs> and, minutes. And the Simpsons bit is also over in seven minutes, which the show is not. Nope. Mm. And I would even say that this in a shorter format would be any better, and it certainly doesn't work in a long format either. Um, I don't even think it works in, like, a episodic TV show format, even if it was like you know thirteen episodes, mm-hmm. I don't think it works at all for me. I don't, I don't, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just the action don't. wasn't there, I guess. Like, I, I wish the fights were better. Like, if we're talking about ninja action, I wanted something more interesting, and this never really got there. So, no, yeah. I didn't. The, the yeah. best they get to is like they do some cool stuff where like the flying scroll robot will make a holograms of her, and she sort of does that to sort of trick the enemy. But even that wasn't portrayed particularly well. Like, I think Naruto did stuff like that better. With like doppelgangers as like um, you know decoys and stuff, so yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I don't know. I love <laughs> yeah, I, I I I think this is a waste of ninety minutes. <laughs> yeah. So so this this shows from <laughs> Studio Three Hertz. Uh, they don't have sort of a a storied history. Probably the most famous thing they've done is Flip Flappers, and I know a bunch of people really like Flip Flappers. I thought it was pretty weak myself uh mm. did anybody else like flip flappers i remember look, or, i thought like it looked cool visually but i didn't really care about the plot at all so i never I, stuck with it honestly no I, I didn't even uh, remember that uh, i i hated the character so much i just could not watch it um i mean they had a, a decent director it was an ep- a director who did some dr- episodes for little witch academia <laughs> um but the script writer uh, was not um not up to the task here. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, I guess if you have, if you got nine minutes to kill, you could do worse. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Could, <laughs> it, it, that uh, isn't fair. Honestly, you could do other things in ninety minutes. Oh, sure, yeah. For sure. I'm not saying go watch this thing, but if like I don't know, maybe <laughs> you're at a con, you got you want to sit down and rest your feet. This is playing in a theater. Uh, yeah, you could do worse. Yeah. <laughs> Sure. Yeah, this is sure. Trapper, absolutely. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it it does have you know a robotic flying squirrel, yeah, and sure. telekinetic girls. Yeah. Don't let that be the sell. It's just, you're yeah. not pitching I'm, this I, to I, the I'm anime club. I'm just saying, like, get a uh, comic, maybe yeah. some free time, and you want to rest. <laughs> this would be, if that was playing in the theater, you have to walk by video room three, let's say. <laughs> you sprain you your do... ankle. You know, you, you, you uh, just lie in the hall, or you sit in the chair where this is playing. Take yeah. the chair, man. Take yeah. the chair. Uh, many of the characters in this entertainment property wear shoes at different points during the movie, <laughs> um, and sit in chairs. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. So I'm going to give three links here. Um, OGLink.com slash 4M8 M-A and M-B. One goes to the wiki, one goes to A&N, and one finally goes to Crunchyroll if you feel like you want to watch it. Let me just say, this is not for your mate, this is not for your mother, and is, this load of crap is larger than four megs. So that's it. That, those are the links. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, this is not worth your time. It's not, this is not worth anything. In my opinion, yeah, I'm the most negative, but that's fine. Um, you because could... Alan doesn't like anything. <laughs> yeah, but certainly I don't like this on okay, I'm not holding him against him on this one. No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's probably right. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I think uh, are we good? Do we have anything sure. more to say? Uh, I don't think there's anything more to be said about this show, other than we should probably close up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think okay. we're all in agreement yeah. with that. Jefferson gives it a big meh. <laughs> Is that what he said in Discord? No, I don't know. Okay. You're yes, probably that's right. Exactly what he said in Discord. That's all he says in Discord sometimes. So. <laughs> <laughs> Lately, all it is is he moves. He's he's uh, got a signature saying, and he's sticking with it. No, he's got a new one. He moves now. He just goes yeah. moo. 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 M O O. Yeah, that's why I call him Jeff Cal. <laughs> no, it's not even that irritating. It's just moo. <laughs> That's how it gets your attention. So anyhow, we're uh, we're going to stop getting your attention by closing up. Um, so for all the things we've mentioned 
here, please visit our website, www.talkgeneration.net. What are we going to talk about next week? Good question. I don't know. When we decide, you'll find out on Wednesday because that is when we podcast. For feedback, you can always hit us up at oglink.com slash feedback. It'll take you into Discord. You can hang out with us in Discord. If you want to become a Patreon supporter, you can do that, oglink.com slash Patreon. And then, um, you know, there's email, there's Skype, but, you know, no one calls or emails us anymore. Yeah. It's just the state of how things are. Um, okay, so Matt, you have a fortune I see. Uh, it might be good. It might be informational. It might be a complete load of crap like the anime we just watched. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay, <laughs> this week's fortune cookie to guide you through your upcoming week is good books are friends who are always ready to talk to us. Okay. I suppose. All right, everyone. Well, enjoy your week. Uh, Hopefully, we'll have something better for you next time. (laughs) See ya. Bye-bye.